from our Chicago studios. This is the Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Samana Siddiqui. Our top story tonight. An official report says the death of an eight-year-old migrant girl in U.S. custody earlier this year could have been avoided. Panamanian-born Anadith Dane Reyes Alvarez, who was detained by U.S. Border Patrol, died of a high fever in May. She had crossed the U.S.-Mexico border in Texas with her parents and siblings. Alvarez's numerous pleas for medical help went unheeded, even though she had breathing problems, flu-like symptoms, and was in pain. She suffered from pathological cell anemia and cardiac complications. Alvarez was denied the use of an ambulance three times before reporting a seizure. Officials requested an ambulance after the seizure, but it was too late as the girl died from her intense fever shortly after that. Dr. Paul Wise is a pediatrician appointed by a court to investigate the incident. He says Alvarez's death was clearly preventable and it has raised deep concerns about government care for migrants at the southern border. Digital rights activists have welcomed the introduction of a bill in U.S. Congress to protect citizens' data. Called the Fourth Amendment is Not for Sale Act, it was approved Wednesday by the House Judiciary Committee. A bipartisan group of lawmakers introduced it in the hopes that it will prohibit intelligence and law enforcement agencies from accessing citizens' data without permission. The bill would close a loophole in federal law that allows the government to buy data that would otherwise require a warrant. That includes information on Americans' whereabouts, internet activity, or health care. U.S. intelligence agencies have long been accused of circumventing the Constitution to get protected location data in bulk, including data from Muslim dating and prayer apps. Pramila Jayapal, chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, says the proposed legislation will protect Americans from unreasonable search or seizure. Digital rights groups have welcomed the bill, calling it an important step toward protecting Americans' privacy. The bill will now likely be considered by the full House of Representatives. The U.S. has called on Israel to ensure equal treatment of all American citizens, regardless of national origin, religion or ethnicity. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller told reporters that this policy of equal treatment should apply to all U.S. citizens, including Palestinian Americans. Israel often denies Palestinian Americans entry or makes it difficult for them to travel at Israeli airports or land borders. Miller says the United States will monitor Israel's implementation of the equal treatment policy. Israel is seeking to participate in the U.S. visa waiver program. This would allow its citizens to travel to the United States without a visa. However, the U.S. is expecting a quid pro quo from Israel for the privilege. The U.S. government will decide by September 30th whether Israel will be included in the program. In related news, hundreds of protesters gathered outside the U.S. Capitol as Israeli President Isaac Herzog delivered a speech to Congress on Wednesday. The Israeli-American demonstrators say they want to send a message to President Joe Biden that he should stand up for democracy in Israel. They say Biden should not allow Israel to slide into dictatorship. Protesters not only lamented the overhaul of the judiciary, but also urged Herzog not to underestimate the threat to Israeli democracy. After their meeting at the White House, President Biden told the New York Times that he urged Israeli leaders to stop the judicial overhaul bill. A Connecticut Muslim lawmaker who was attacked last month outside a prayer hall has alleged that police are downplaying the assault. Mariam Khan is the first Muslim elected to the Connecticut House of Representatives. She was attacked by Andre Desmond in Hartford. Khan alleges that Desmond made sexual advances towards her and her daughters. Later, he also allegedly slapped her and threw her to the ground. As a result, she suffered a concussion and an injury to her right arm and shoulder. Hartford District Attorney Sharmiz Walcott charged Desmond with attempted third-degree sexual assault, second-degree assault, strangulation and risk of injury to children. Khan says it was a hate crime and wondered why police did not include it in the charges against Desmond. She is accusing police of downplaying the attack and says it was much more violent than described in the police report. Khan says she is concerned about the safety of other women in Hartford who might call police after an assault. A new drug to slow Alzheimer's. Details after the break, so stay tuned and we'll be right back.
Welcome back. A new drug has shown promise in slowing the effects of Alzheimer's disease. Donane Mab is in a phase three clinical trial. Researchers have found that it slows cognitive decline by about 35%. According to the Alzheimer's Association, over 6 million Americans suffer from the disease, which is associated with memory loss. This is the second drug that has shown promise in slowing the progression of Alzheimer's. The FDA fully approved the other drug, Lecanemab, a few weeks ago. Both target key proteins associated with the disease, slowing the cognitive decline in the early stages of Alzheimer's. The drugs are at administered in a clinical setting as an infusion into the veins and are closely monitored. But they do carry some risks, including brain swelling and bleeding. However, some feel that the potential benefits outweigh the risks. The Somali army has killed at least 30 al-Shabaab terrorists, including two so-called commanders in a military operation. The Somali National Army conducted the operation on Wednesday near Al-Qura region. A statement from the country's Ministry of Defense says about 200 al-Shabaab militants were killed in different regions within a week. The latest operation came a day after Somali President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud visited Jauhar. That is the administrative capital of south-central Hirshibel state, which is an epicenter of the terrorist group's activities. Mohammed, who was elected for a second term last year, declared an all-out war on al-Shabaab. That has resulted in the group losing large swaths of territory in the central regions. Somalia has been plagued by insecurity for years, with the greatest threat coming from al-Shabaab and ISIS. The World Health Organization says more than 20 million children missed one or more vaccine doses against COVID-19 last year. Another 15 million children skipped vaccination altogether. WHO Director General Tedros Ghebreyesus says 4 million more children were vaccinated against COVID-19 in 2022. He says while this is encouraging, many more families have chosen not to vaccinate their children or have missed out. Eleven people were killed and several others injured Wednesday when a wall collapsed in Pakistan's capital, Islamabad, due to heavy rains. A local official says the wall of a bridge under construction collapsed, burying workers there. The National Disaster Management Authority says 99 people, including 41 children, have been killed nationwide since June 25th due to heavy rains. The monsoon rains have long wreaked havoc in Pakistan. Last year, unprecedented rains and floods inundated a third of the country, killing over 1,000 people, destroying thousands of homes and causing $30 billion in damage. In neighboring India, floods have reached the site of the iconic Taj Mahal, a World Heritage UNESCO site. The 17th century white marble structure is in Agra, over 100 miles from the south of India's capital, New Delhi. It was built by Emperor Shah Jahan in memory of his wife, Mumtaz Mahal. Floodwaters from the Yamuna River have washed around the Taj Mahal's walls. But the Archaeological Survey of India says the monument is not at risk. Experts say it is rare for floodwaters to reach the outer walls of the Taj Mahal. They say it's a sign of the increasing frequency and severity of flooding in the region due to climate change. The Yamuna River, one of the most important rivers in India, has reached its highest level since records began. It has prompted mass evacuations and dozens of deaths that have been reported in northern states from severe flooding. Dozens of women organized a rare public protest in Afghanistan's capital, Kabul, on Wednesday against the closure of beauty salons in the city. They held a placard with the slogan, Do not take away our bread and water. The Taliban government has ordered the closure of all beauty salons for women. Security forces fired shots in the air and used water cannons to disperse the demonstrators. The United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan condemned the use of force against demonstrators. The mission says Afghans have the right to express their opinions freely and without fear of reprisals. The closure of beauty salons is the latest in a series of restrictions on women's freedom. The Taliban has also banned women from working in most government jobs and from attending college. These restrictions have been widely condemned by Islamic scholars in and outside the country, as well as internationally. France barred and detained the head of a UK group that criticized its persecution of Muslims. Executive director of the UK-based group CAGE, Mohamed Rabbani, was reportedly harassed last week. The French government barred Rabbani from entering the country and detained him for nearly 24 hours. Police took him into custody and to a detention center for migrants shortly after his arrival in Paris. He was denied access to his electronic devices for most of that time. Rabbani was questioned by police at the airport, at the detention center, and by an official from the French Ministry Ministry of the Interior. Upon his return to London's Gatwick Airport, Rabbani again was detained for an hour. 
Cage has been monitoring government policies in France directly impacting Muslims and their freedom to practice their faith. Last year, Rabani presented evidence against French treatment of Muslims at a meeting of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. The group has presented extensive complaints and evidence to the EU and the Human Rights Council, UN, about the persecution of Muslims in the country. Human rights groups say the ban on Cage officials is an expression of Islamophobia in France and demonstrates a broader pattern. Turkey will sell drones to Saudi Arabia. The lucrative contract was signed by President Recep Tayyip Erdogan during his recent visit to Saudi Arabia. The deal was between Turkish defense company Baykar and the Saudi Defense Ministry. Both countries signed several memorandums of understanding in many fields, including energy, direct investment and defense industries. The visit is expected to revive the Turkish economy, which recorded a deficit of over $37 billion in the first five months of this year. That's all from our Chicago studios tonight. Thank you for tuning in. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest updates. For more content, keep watching Muslim Network TV or visit muslimnetwork.tv. Salam and good night.